for your team to thank you very much andre and thank you uh, for also to, to your team um to hosting this webinar today the joint webinar uh, between uh, from open air and uh, eurochris let me sh share my screen so hopefully you could see this one yes perfect so um yeah thank you um and good morning um to our webinar uh, joint webinar uh, on regional and national research information portals today um this uh, joint webinar um is has also representatives from um two other countries um from finland Jonas nikanen and tom woods from fris i will introduce uh both also in the minute and um as uh, andre said uh, if you on twitter or on Mastodome, please uh, tweet and feel free to boost uh on the channels there this webinar our Agenda today is um, comprehensive. Uh, we have a short introduction on um, uh, Eurochris and the guidelines as well, and uh, followed by the ongoing projects and lessons learned. Uh, and one main focus is to have a discussion with you. Um, hopefully, we don't uh, break the hour um as much but uh let us see how is going on this and um first of all uh we um would like to have a short overview and we prepared some full questions um for you to have um dedic more specific um introduce from your side i launched the first question um and uh what is your location uh, you are joining from you share mostly i see some uh also some affiliations in the chat but um please feel free to uh, also these answer these question um most of you have voted so i will close this in three two one second so i will share this results uh with you hopefully you could see um, most of you are joining uh from europe it's uh, mostly of Europe time this, but um, we have also uh, one from Asia. Great, thank you for this question. The next question is on uh, what is your professional rule in the Chris domain? And the second one is uh, what type of CRIS or research information management systems do you represent? And I see there are many of you have voted. So I will end the poll in three, two, one. Last chance. And share the results with you. The most currently we have uh Chris managers for research information man in research and information management 
and others. So uh, <laughs> please let us know uh, what is your rule in these Chris domains, but as well as we have some technical support for Chris's here. Great. Um, for the representatives, uh, mostly from institutional, national and international level. Oh, great. Thank you very much for contributing to these pools. So, um, as I said, uh, we have two main parts today. Um, one is um, some um, presentations. Uh, and I'm delighted that our um, Pablo de Castro from Eurocris is uh, also uh, with me, as well as Jonas Nikanen from the development team uh, from CSC and the research um, FI service owner. And Tom Woods, um, happy to see you here also from Fris uh, in Belgium. And my name is Andreas Czerniak from Bielefeld University Library. And uh, Bielefeld is uh, one part of the technical team in open air for integrating um, Chris systems in open air as a data source. Thank you very much for joining today. And um, first, uh, better is together to discuss uh, the ongoing projects and lesson learns today. But first of all, I would like to pass the floor to Pablo de Castro. Pablo, the floor is yours. Hi, thank you, Andreas. I'm going to try turning on my video as well. That's my mic, uh, so you can see me. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so yeah, thank you for the invitation to take part in, in today's webinar. I'm going to very briefly provide um, the rationale uh, from a Eurochris perspective uh, to this um, joint webinar. Uh, it's not the first one we do together, Open Air and Eurochris, on the implementation of the uh, Open Air guidelines for Chris managers. There was another one last October. Uh, next slide, please. So, a brief introduction to Eurochris. Uh, next. As you can see on the slide, uh, Eurocris's mission is to promote cooperation and promote the sharing of knowledge uh, across the research information community. So this is Chris systems, uh, Chris managers in a wider in a wider sense, uh, both research information managers, technical support uh, colleagues for Chris systems, uh, using the common European research information format, the CERIF standard as a basis for uh, interoperability for the purpose of these sort of community management uh, Eurocris organizes a number of events uh, luckily we're back into in-person events these days uh, and a number of webinars as well the most uh, relevant area of activity among those shown on the slide is probably the DRIS, which you may or may not have heard about. This is the directory of research information systems that Eurocris maintains. Uh, next slide, please. So this is uh, our attempt to capture the uh, Chris landscape, a snapshot of the Chris landscape uh, in, a, in a database with a number of metadata to describe the, the various platforms. Uh, since today's webinar is mostly oriented uh, to national and regional CRIS systems or research portals, uh, I'm showing on the screen um, a snapshot of the current national and regional CRIS landscape in Europe, uh, plus Israel as well. Um, as the information currently available uh, in the address in this directory, which currently hosts, I think, over 1,350 entries, most of them institutional, 
but this is the snapshot uh, you get from the trees in terms of uh, national and regional uh, crease. Uh, the ones marked in yellow are part of these uh, national slash regional research portals working group. Um, you have a URL uh, at, at, at the bottom of the slide introducing with a, I mean, pointing at a blog post introducing this working group that tries to bring together a uh, significant number, as you can see, of uh, regional and national CRIS platforms. It's not all of them. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, Georgia is in the call. Uh, this GRIS, uh, Georgian Re uh, Research Information System, is a very recent addition to the DRIS. There are further national and regional CRIS uh, in Europe that are not here, or not yet anyway, because they're not in the DRIS. The DRIS plays a relevant role, as Andreas will explain later, in making CRIS systems open air compliant. So it's important, uh, also uh, important to get a comprehensive snapshot of the CRIS infrastructure to have the appropriate entries um, registered in the DRIS. There is a number of additional national CRIS systems. You can see them on the notes on the right-hand side of the slide outside Europe, uh, in Brazil, in Peru, in New Zealand. These three are members of this uh, national regional research portals working group um, because of the time zone differences and so on. I don't think any of them are here, although they may well be able to listen to this recording. It's exciting to be able to work internationally, uh, kind of beyond Europe, although, as you can see, the number of Chris uh, systems of at a national or regional level in Europe is is uh, remarkable and there are very good opportunities for uh, a collaboration. Next slide, please. So this is the rationale for this uh, uh, working group that I just mentioned. It's managed uh, jointly by uh, the Resynergy project in Austria, who are represented in the call today as well, of course, and Eurocris. Uh, with the Resynergy team doing the heavy lifting in terms of organizing the calls and uh, keeping the um, infrastructure for the conversation to happen across platforms. You can see on the slides, the first call for this uh, working group took place uh, on the 1st of February this year. So this is a fairly young initiative. Next slide, please. Uh, with uh, many representatives. One of the topics discussed in this first call uh, a couple of months ago was uh, the scope of the collaboration. So we know most of these projects, most of these initiatives for national and regional CRIS share the same areas of activity. So it's really useful if they can all, you know, establish some sort of conversation on what the relevant topics are for them and the opportunities they see for learning from each other, sharing best practices and so on. And as you can see on the slides, one of the topics raised for uh, this you know, discussion across countries and across platforms was the implementation of the open air guidelines for Chris managers. This is very timely, in fact, because Although open air is harvesting a lot of uh, data providers already, there may be areas where these sorts of national and regional CRIS systems are able to provide information that is not there yet in open air. Uh, so this applies to specific countries uh, more than others. But uh, it's really useful if some default workflows for becoming open air compliant can be discussed uh, across platforms, across systems and countries. And this is the rationale uh, for today's webinar. Thanks, and, and that's it from me. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you for the introduction to you, Chris, and uh, to uh, introduce the working group. Um, that's great to see this uh, 
group work, um, a working group in Eurochris. And uh, as next, I would give a brief introduction to the uh, guidelines for CRIS managers. Um, depends on our time. Um, the guideline, the open air guidelines uh, as a whole uh, starts back in uh, 2010. Um, you see a roadmap from open air starts in 2009, um, 2010, the first literature repository guidelines. And uh, five years after um, the first uh, Chris, uh, guidelines for Chris managers was introduced. Um, this was um, an early state. And uh, in the next uh, three years to 2018, the Chris, um, the guidelines for Chris managers are improved, enhanced, and um, uh, during some, uh, during the community driven parts. And as well in the last years, uh, we also uh, see some needs for updating these guidelines. And hopefully uh, we could um, update, uh, you will see an update uh, in the next few weeks regarding the CRIS guidelines. The CRIS guidelines covers um, a part of the Com European Research Information System model, the Reef. Um, the Reef, the Reef is um, has a whole to uh, cover all the research information way um, in organizations and universities and so on. And the guidelines for exchanging information regarding some entities are uh, discover um, most of all the publications, the patents, the products, as well as the projects, persons, and organization units um, in the in the core. And uh, um, as addition of their entities for funding uh, exposed and equipment in, uh, instruments, as well as events. Um, as you can see here, this is not the whole Zarif model, which is exposed and covered by the guidelines. It is only um, these entities currently. Um, the Guidelines update covers um, in the past the an updating of the core resource type vocabulary. Uh, in the guidelines, uh, the current guidelines have the core resource type vocabulary version uh, one. So this is evolved in the last uh, in the last year. So we updating the resource type vocabulary to the latest one. Um, these activities, uh, as you can see, uh, is on uh, GitHub. This is the issue number 99 on GitHub. And um, we, uh, as, a, as a community, we create these GitHub issues um, to track our uh, work on the guidelines. Um, and everybody and uh, could uh, contribute to these guidelines as well. So it is open for the whole community of uh, research information system managers um, to improve the guidelines. Um, during the last year, we also make a report on the compliance level, or the compliance of the open air CRIS manager guidelines uh, with the fair principles. Uh, this work is in a finaliz finalization state currently uh, and will be published in Sinodo today or tomorrow on this uh, DOI. Uh, and as you can see, uh, the discussion on uh, this report is also mentioned in, on, on GitHub. Um, 
we are adding more descriptions and examples um, and updating also the open air Chris validator, which is um, provided by uh, the Eurochris GitHub repository as well. Um, for contributing, uh, you can see uh, on the bottom the link to GitHub OpenAir slash guidelines Chris managers. Some um, Chris application platforms are out of the box OpenAir compliant. And uh, you can see, uh, as we know currently, uh, DSpace Chris since version 5.10 uh, and 6.3 are out of the box uh, open air compliant with the Chris latest Chris guidelines that we have. Um, then the commercial product of uh, Pure is since version 5.14 compliant out of the box uh, with the open air guidelines, as well as Omega Psia since version 2.01.2. This is um, also a community driven part. Uh, we have an overview of repository platforms um, that are supporting our uh, not only the CRIS guidelines, um, but the CRIS guidelines as well. Um, you can see in, in this Google Doc, um, this is open for everyone to which uh, platform in which. Uh, under which version supports which open air guidelines. And this is not all. The um, guidelines will be uh, evolved in, in the next, um, in the future. And um, this will be based on the uh, initiative of the uh, refactoring project by Eurochris to refactoring the, the reef model, as you can, as you have seen before. And um, these have some improved topic, uh, some topics to improve uh, the reef. Um, mostly, as one part uh, to say regarding the harvesting, um, the harvesting of the um, in, in, uh, Chris entities will is currently uh, via our EPMH protocol, which is, as you know, uh, 20 years old. So the harvesting will be uh, switched, I think, uh, to an API, which is uh, definitely the, uh, the next, uh, next part of harvesting here. Um, as a next, a short introduction to the Directory of Research Information Systems, um, Pablo. The floor is yours for Chris, for the Driss. Um, yep, thank you. Um, so I mentioned um, the Driss earlier, the Directory of Research Information Systems with over uh, 1,350 entries that's Eurochris maintains um you can see a snapshot of the home page for um the dress as as it stands um it is based on the communications we get mostly from institutions and um stakeholders kind of developing or maintaining national cris systems uh, or regional cris systems so it's not a perfect snapshot. Uh, it's always work in progress uh, because not all institutions know about it and not all institutions uh, get in touch uh, with Eurochris uh, in order for their, their entry or the entry for their system to be um, created or updated uh, in the system. Um, you can see on the list of most popular countries, uh, most of them are uh, in Europe. Um, the, you have India on top because India is a, is a huge country in the first place and they have developed a specific solution that is implemented um, uh, very widely across the country. You have the United States there, uh, but other than that, most of the entries are are European in terms of uh, software solutions, which you have also on, on this homepage as a summary. 
uh, aidings, the Indian uh, Greece solution is is there on top as well. Um, and then you have both um, commercial uh, Greece solutions like pure um, or symplectic elements or um, Explodo or uh, Convetis. Uh, you have open source uh, Greece solutions like DSpace Greece, like Vivo. Um, and then you have quite a number of national level Chris solutions that are typically only implemented in one country. Uh, this is the likes of Omega Psir or Christine. Omega Psir is in Poland, Christine is in Norway. Um, Avesis there is in Turkey. Uh, Dalnet Chris is in Spain. So you have quite a few of these solutions that are uh, kind of locally uh, developed in specific countries and widely implemented in those countries. Next slide, please. Uh, it may be, so this is a snapshot, a, a geolocation-based map of the distribution of uh, the crease entries across uh, the world. Now it's important for crease systems that want to become open air compliant to be registered in the DRIS because I'm, I'm not sure if there's a slide. Let's let's go to the next slide, please. There may be a slide showing the metadata uh, that a record contains for a, a given Cree solution. Um, this one, uh, thank you, Janneke, for mentioning the contact person uh, outdated here. Uh, it will be replaced uh, or updated very soon. Typically, the contact person is not included because this changes all the time and it's very difficult to keep that updated for over uh, 1,300 entries and you would rely on constant communication from institutions. So we usually keep a uh, kind of minimally sufficient metadata sets with the name of the craze, the description where applicable um, its status, whether it's operational or under construction, its scope, whether it's institutional, national, uh, fund decrease, um, and then the URL for a, ideally for a publicly available um, uh, research portal or web page where external users can see what this system is about. Um, as you can see, this one is for METIS, for the uh, institutional crease at Radboud University in Nijmegen in, in the Netherlands. And it contains a, a badge there for open air uh, compliance, actually. So this system is already open air compliant. Um, we're trying to mark them uh, with a badge um, whenever they have already completed the process for implementing this uh, Chris uh, guidelines that we're discussing today, um, critically for the process of implementing the guidelines, for the process of uh, getting the crease identified by open air, so they can, uh, I mean, eventually harvest uh, the content of the crease or specific content in the crease, uh, it needs to be registered in the DRIS. So uh, there is a, a number of metadata, as you can see, on the slide um, that is coupled to the open air infrastructure so that it can be retrieved from the DRIS and identified, identified for open air purposes uh, for advancing in this process of harvesting uh, the content of uh, open air. So please, if your Chris system, I mean, this one is probably outdated, not just uh, in terms of the uh, contact person uh, that Yannick has mentioned has, has changed, but also in terms of the number of users, probably. So it could make sense to remove some of the information on the record in order not to require kind of constant updates. Uh, importantly, if you have a Chris system at your institution or in your country, and it's not in the DRIS, uh, please uh, drop us a line at eurochris at eurochris.org and we will uh, update it uh, if the record is there or we will have a new one created if it's not. Um, I think Andreas will explain 
how uh, it works. This is the URL. Thank you uh, for the address where you can check where you can check um, if your system is already there, if it's correctly described there, if there's any updates required. Uh, as mentioned, there's a number of minimally sufficient metadata elements uh, that we need to create a, a DRIS entry for a system that is not there. Uh, and you have them listed on the slide. The URL is very important. This is a topic we uh, want to discuss with the community. So what happens if an institution is running a system that is not publicly available? Uh, is that, I mean, can we include this in the address if there's no URL and nobody can check how it works? I'm thinking about, I mean, for those of you in uh, Britain or in Ireland, I'm thinking about the likes of uh, WordTribe or Vidatum, uh, which is also running in, in Georgia. Um, so we are seeing an increasing number of cases because the concept of research information management is uh, uh, systematically expanding uh, a significant number of cases where systems held by universities, which can be considered research information management systems, are not uh, visible from the outside. And that is a little bit challenging. So we would need ideally a URL for a publicly available research portal in order to include um, an entry, a system in the DRIS. And then finally, uh, the process for making a CRIS open air compliant will be described next with some case studies. Uh, a key aspect is having an, a so-called OAI PMH endpoint. Uh, which has a URL, and this is the point, this is the um, API in the CRIS system where the information will be harvested from. So although we are often including this uh, OIPMH endpoint URL in address record, it's not publicly shown in order not to compromise safety. We don't want to create, you know, uh, uh, opportunities for other uh, stakeholders to, you know, look into that endpoint. So it's never shown. It's, it may be there if you share it with us, and then OpenAir can collect it and use it. Uh, OpenAir will always be able to see it. So they have the right uh, permissions and privileges to be able to read and retrieve the uh, URL for the OIPMA chain point for a CRIS from the DRIS record when available, uh, but it's it's never shown. Uh, so for instance, for the METIS one, uh, there was no URL for the OIPMA chain point. Um, I think that's it from a DRIS perspective, Andreas. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, and uh, some important to say, is um, that these, this DRIS is one of the fourth uh, authorities, re authority registries for the EOSC. So if you are registered uh, your CRIS system in the DRIS, uh, it would be also shown in the process of uh, onboarding of, uh, uh, of a service, a data source in the European Open Science Cloud. So, um, the other uh, three are authority registries are uh, open door, re3 data, uh, and fair sharing. Thank you very much, Pablo. And now uh, the important part is uh, to present some um, ongoing work and lessons learned from um, two parts. One is uh, from FIATA. Uh, presented by uh, Jonas Nikanen uh, from CSC in Finland, and one is from the FRIS. Um, but first of all, Jonas, please introduce yourself uh, and Vieta. Thank you. And give me a hint for the next slide. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas, for the really brief introduction, and, and hello to you all. I see familiar names in the participants list, but, but my, my, my name is Jonas Nikkonen. I work at CSC, uh, has been working there for quite a long time, uh, dealing with research information in general, and especially the CRIS systems, um, and, and that on a national level. 
as well and, and has been part of uh, your Chris uh, meetings for, for, for quite a long time now. Uh, but next slide uh, is more about the actual actual topic here um, about Birta Publication Information Service, which is the long name for that. Um, this is basically something that has been running for quite some time now, a decade to be exact. And um, this is really something, a national endeavor in Finland uh, that has been taken by the ministry in the first place to gather information and publications uh, done on, in, in higher education institutes and, and universities uh, of applied sciences, uh, for example. And that have, we have done for quite some time. Uh, this relates uh, the whole process of, of gathering information from, from local organization is really about the national funding model here in Finland, which has this uh, criteria in, in, in about publications published in, in organizations. But this has been in place for quite some time. Uh, nowadays, we get in some like 60 a uh, thousand publications per year it includes uh, like uh, scientific publications but then professional publication artistic publications as well so it's it's quite a broad topic of things and and it's also non-biased in in the sense of disciplines that it covers um but virta is really the service within that we provide on a national level uh, it doesn't really have a ui in the sense that you could actually check what's in, in there, but rather all information that is in Virta uh, in a data hub uh, way is, is then exposed to this research.fi, the national CRIS portal we have in Finland. Uh, you can check it out. It, it's in research.fi, obviously. And, and it, that's that's something that I usually talk about, but this is really, really about Virta, Virta now today here and, and the open air integration that we have already done a few years back. So some lessons learned on, on that. But basically the Virta information is indeed in research to defy, uh, but you can also uh, access it in statistical or reporting needs via this uh, another Vipunen portal. But then also the API layer is quite important for us and has been even before before the open air integration. So we provide just API and OIE PMH in multiple formats uh, already before the uh, open air integration. But next slide, please. So briefly on, on why we actually tried to achieve something that is uh, called integration to open air. Uh, this really relates to the idea that having uh, finished publications uh, spread uh, more more vibrantly on, on national and international level. And in Finland, even previously we had, for example, organizational repositories uh, might have provided directly to open air, but then we uh, tried to achieve like centralized solution for this. So not all organizations have to provide their information on publications directly to open air, but rather as they are using Virta, uh, as it's mandatory for the organizations, they can then actually just provide for Virta and then Virta takes care of the rest and takes the publications to, to open air. And obviously this has to do with metadata quality as well, uh, in the sense that the repositories, for example, uh, that are used by organizations, uh, it might be limited in the sense of, of bibliographic uh, information about those publications. So, so that's one one uh, incentive as well for this whole integration. But next slide. Um, this is an overview of what we actually did. Um, on the below part of, of, of the slide or the, uh, or the table, really, uh, you can see in quarters uh, what we actually did uh, or planned to do, and we kind of followed, followed the plans indeed. And you can see that how, how it uh, progressed uh, schedule-wise. But as was mentioned in the bullets there, um, majority of the work was really about agreeing with the organizations because we as a national uh, service don't really control 
uh, the data itself in the sense that we could do something without asking the organizations. So there was a lot of this coordination work on what we actually provide for open air, Ex uh, like explaining what we, we, we tried to achieve and then, then discussing that. So that was majority of the work in there. Uh, obviously, there is the technical um, part of the integration work, but that have, could have been achieved in less time than what is what is mentioned here in the table in quarters. Uh, but on the second bullet, I really tried to catch the faces that we uh, faced in in a way in this in this process of of getting information to open air. So first is really about the planning work and the coordination with organizations, like I mentioned. Then is the actual mapping of, of data models and the schemas used within the data exchange. And then is the actual work in expressing that data in a format, so third format via OIPMH for open air to actually integrate or harvest the information. And then we move towards uh, testing it so we use beta environments for that, uh, do any corrections for the data exchange. And then the last phase is really about the production starting and, and registering the, the endpoint, et cetera. So that's roughly how we faced it. Then if, if you move onwards, um, this is really the guidelines we like was mentioned also previously here. Um, uh, I tried, I don't know if they are visible enough, but on the right hand side, I tried to put those arrows on which elements we actually provide to open air. So we didn't look at the whole, well, all of the entities, but rather those that are uh, relevant for real time information in the sense that we actually have something for those. Next slide. Um, and this is more like information for, for participants here that what we actually did uh, in regards of the mapping. Um, obviously, a lot of work was put into the mapping of, of data schemas in the sense that we could actually ach achieve uh, serif, uh, uh, serif or have the data of where the topic we exchange in serif format. Uh, obviously, we have, we use this national data model in Virta, and we had to do the exchange. And uh, you can see it is also public in the sense that you could have a look after you get the presentations, but have a look at how we actually did the mapping, how it looks in a table, and then also the Virta data model as a reference. But then I guess the last slide and the most important part for this, you know, yeah, that's the last slide. Thank you. The most important part for, for this webinar is about the lessons learned. I, and I tried to list a few here. So first, it's really about the implementation process, that it's really dependent uh, on your system that you use to store information. Like uh, was mentioned here that some of the, uh, I don't know, commercial solutions uh, already supported out of the box, or it might be easier to achieve. We did this in an in-house uh, solution, so it resulted in a bit of more work, but then you get the customization and, and the choices it brings brings to you. Second is really about the documentation that, it, yeah, it is indeed available um, and quite straightforward to, to uh, follow. But then what we missed then and what is now uh, kind of present in this webinar is uh, it's really about uh, best practices on how to do it and what kind of phases it includes. So hopefully this helps in that way. And the third is really about aiming for, for the uh, metadata quality. Um, if you want to uh, have a broad data exchange in the way that most of the elements that are within your system to be in open air, it requires quite a bit of possibly complex work regards the mapping. So that's something uh, you, you should think about when, when trying to achieve something like this. And then the fourth is not really a lesson, but in, in the sense that obviously our work hasn't stopped there. So we got the information about publication publications in Finland to, to open air. But the idea here uh, has been in the beginning that uh, when we have the research to DFI, which is this national CRIS, it includes information from Virta, for example, on publications, but it includes other entities as well. So projects, funding, et cetera, data sets. 
So we need, need to widen the scope of research entities that are made available to open air. And this is partly related to what Andreas mentioned about the future of the CRIS guidelines, but also something that we do in an EU project uh, called Fair Call for EOSC. You can check the web link over there. But there is a case study of national CRIS systems trying to achieve uh, the RD graph integration, so basically the open air extension. And this is really relating to also the serif refactoring process that was mentioned here as well. But thank you. That was briefly what I had to say about the Virta lessons learned. Thank you very much, Jonas. Thank you for the excellent insights um, that you uh, that you have um, presented in over the or that you have implemented in the last years and also presented here today. And thank you for your time. Uh, I know that you are currently in a conference of Faircore for EOSC, um, and um, Hopefully, you have time to answer some questions uh, afterwards after our next presentation, um, which comes from the Belgium, uh, the first system from Tom Woods. Uh, Tom Woods, please introduce yourself, and uh, your the floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah. Yeah. My name is Tom Woods. Um, I've been working now for uh, Fris, which stands for the Flemish Research Information Space. We're working there for three years and a half, almost four years. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm yeah, the analyst and, and also the scrum master. Um, also the engineers are uh, in our call. So if there are any questions, you can also ask them. Um, and that's about shorts, uh, why I'm, I'm looking, yeah. Um, so this is Fris, a uh, short overview of what I'm trying to present. The logo of Frizz is in the top right corner if you would ever see it. And um, you can consult us on researchportal.org. Um, first, short introduction what is Frizz and a schematical overview of, what, uh, of how Frizz looks. Uh, then, some short words on how to, why we want to get uh, open air compliance. Um, and then the most important part, the lessons learned. And yeah, since we're still building um, or integration with OpenAir, we're still working on the OAI PMH interface. Uh, then the next steps, uh, once we finished with the, what we're doing now. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, so what is Fris? Fris is the Flemish Research Information Space. Um, it is a Fris system that gets data from all the research institutes in Flanders. Um, it started in 2008. Uh, and yeah, we started with the universities and more and more institutes have, have uh, added their data to Fris. So now in total, we have around 100 uh, institutes delivering data to Fris. Um, exchange is possible in uh, Serif 1.5. Um, to which we added some extensions and then some numbers. I think they're more or less accurate uh, with the current view that we have right now. Um, over 40,000 researchers, um, 580,000 uh, publications and yeah, 56,000 projects. Uh, recently, since last year, more or less, we also have data of patents, research infrastructures and data sets. And um, yeah, you can check it on research portal lobby or, or it's the same, it's the same link. Uh, and you can check which data we currently have. Um, also, open APIs are available, so you can query if uh, you want to build an integration with Frizz, it's also possible. And we use it in Flanders for um, reporting on research and open science, um, since we're a, we're a true believer of open science. And the most important principle um, in Fris is uh, same as with Virta, I think. It's that uh, institutions are still responsible for their own data. So the data is not a Fris. The, um, the information in Fris is uh, still from the institutes. Um, the next slides, please. Thank you. Um, so here is a is an overview of, of uh, a schematical, a very root schematical overview of uh, Fris. It's a little bit simplified for uh, this purpose. 
Um, there's already been some mention of Pure. Um, so institutes that use Pure have an integration with Fris. Um, another possibility is to um, send information to Fris to an, uh, um, an SOAP XML uh, interface. Um, the structure there followed is the Serif 1.5 structure with some additions. Um, so pure, yeah, pure has its own has its own uh, structure, of course. And there's also an, 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 uh, a possibility to add data through an, uh, an interface. So we do have a UI to which um, institutes who do not have their own CRIS system um, can add their data directly to FRIS. Um, there's a small block uh, below, it's the data flux. Um, this is what we use to check our data. There are some checks on what's being sent to FRIS. And afterwards, yeah, the data is exposed. Um, I already mentioned the OAI PMH interface, but we're not yet in production. So it's currently developed uh, or still under development. Um, data from FRIS can also be, um, well, it's also can also be consulted with uh, SOAP XML. So we have the we have the two flavors. We have the serif uh, structure and uh, the fris structure, which is more closely to the fris model uh, at the, that we use uh, for fris itself. And we have a REST JSON interface that we use to fill our portal, um, for which the link was in uh, one of the previous slides. Uh, small word of the serif. Uh, yeah, I think all it was already mentioned by Andreas. Um, so all the red blocks that you mentioned in the slide 12, I think, um, are, yeah, are also in Fris. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, so yeah, what I already mentioned. So the reason why we want to be open air compliant is uh, for the that we believe in the, the open science. So we believe that the transparency, collaboration, and innovation will help to improve the, the science in, in the world. Um, I also mentioned the uh, FAIR. Uh, so FAIR stands for Findability, Accessibility, Interoperable, and Reusable. Um, FAIR is something that we try to achieve with our data sets. Um, so by delivering data sets to open air, we already try to improve the findability um, and also yeah, in, in findability by delivering the data to open air. And also the... the um, the other three will benefit. The other three and um, uh, qualities will, will will benefit from delivery to open air. Um, another additional point why we want to deliver data to open air is that um, since Fris has the data of more or less 100 research institutions, um, if Fris builds the integration to open air, then of course uh, the other 100 institutes don't have to build this integration anymore. They can still, still do this. Uh, we don't uh, prohibit this. But um, of course, it's, uh, it's not necessary anymore. Um, so the lessons learned, it, it's uh, some of the things that I see that come back from, from um, the, the issues with Virta too. Now, the first issue that we had um, were the guidelines, which guidelines are to follow um, the reason is that since Fris has data from different institutes, but the institutes all deliver the data um, by their own uh, accounts in Fris. So Fris still knows which data is delivered by whom. So we were looking at the provenance block. Uh, and first, we were actually looking at the, the other guidelines, the, the guidelines for literature, institutional and thematic repositories, because that at that point in time, we would also be able to deliver the provenance block. Now, the issue uh, that we have is that um, I put the provenance block on the side of it. Um, that this is not possible because the data comes in through, through a SOAP interface. So some data that's been required for the provenance block we're, we're not able to deliver. Um, so yeah, the, the, uh, we had also had a call uh, with the team of Andreas. So the, the open air guidelines for the Chris managers um, seems to be the more logical solution. Uh, since Fris is, uh, yeah, is, of course, a Chris system. Um, 
Ja, we currently we started with datasets. Um, and we don't, we don't deliver yet the other entities. Um, so as mentioned before, we do have the entities in Fris, but we, we started with, the, with, the, with one entity now. Um, so links to other entities can not yet be delivered uh, either because we don't have those entities yet. Uh, I give a small example of an XML uh, part next to it. And the other part that uh, was what, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot the name, I, uh, the person from Vitra, uh, the responsible from Vitra mentioned, so is the mapping issues. Uh, um, so we have three values for two open air uh, values. So it's it's a little bit, uh, it's checking on how, how can we deliver uh, on the best way the data to open air. Um, that's the same issue as with Vitra had. Uh, and then, yeah, um, of course, uh, open air helped us with some issues. Uh, it's maybe one of the things I also wanted to mention to the other persons who want to build an integration with open air. You're not alone on this. Uh, open air will help you, and you can create some tickets uh, to GitHub. At our site, for example, we, had a, we, had a, we still have a problem with, the, with delivering the creator element for data sets. So, the, yeah. I just mentioned the ticket on GitHub. Of course, it's mainly important for Fris, but also for the other institutes, um, opening a ticket on GitHub for technical issues is definitely an option. Um, then for Fris, yeah, our next step. So currently, yeah, the, it's fixing the, the issue for the creator so that we can deliver the data also in production. Um, so once we fix the, the issue, we can deliver this the OAI. The image interface is already running in testing and acceptance, but then without the, without the creators. Um, and then the further, further steps are, of course, not only the data sets. Um, as mentioned, Serif also uh, supports a lot more than just data sets. So we're also looking into other entities. And then we can also provide the links to the data sets that we're currently delivering or try to deliver at least. Uh, on longer term, um, the, delivery, yeah, the delivery of the, the other ten entities then, and also the possible enrichment from open air to FRIS, uh, once we can deliver of data to, to open air. Uh, the other goal is of course to enrich our own data uh, with the data that's currently in open air of the, and then mainly of the entities that we have ourselves um, to see if we can improve the information in Fris. And I think that was in short um, our presentation. If you have any questions, you can contact me on the email uh, here shown in green. Um, if you don't want to contact me, but you want general support, you can also do that. Uh, we have the link to our research portal. Um, as mentioned before, it has some, some aliases. Um, that for technical questions, you can contact us on the fris.support at vlaanderen.be, uh, which is, uh, or yeah, Vlaanderen is just uh, the Dutch name for Flemish. And uh, fris.vlaanderen.be for the general questions, and then we'll try to answer your questions as soon as possible. So thanks for your uh, time, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them, or the engineers and the program director is also in the call. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for the excellent and clear insights on, on, on FRIS and the ongoing work on, on FRIS currently. Um, thank you very much. And I will uh, give now uh, the floor to our audience and, and tendencies uh, to open uh, the questions and the discussion. Um, we are a little bit late, uh, we passed the hour, but I think it is important to have um, some um, questions from your side, if you have uh, anything. And um, I, I think I must stop sharing my screen to take a look to the Q&A. Or, André? Um, until now, we, we do not have any question. Only comments in the chat.
Okay, feel free to ask uh, questions in the Q&A. So um, the Q&A section will also be saved so we can take a look uh, after this presentations um, to your questions as well. But uh, if you have questions, um, please contact us um, via our mail addresses. I will share this also uh, in the chat. And if you have any specific questions for Jonas or Tom, I think please raise your hand and we can give you the floor as well uh, with the microphone. Jan, I see your hand. Please. Yes, hello, I'm raising my hand. <laughs> Uh, I would have a question to Jonas. Uh, Jonas, how difficult was it to map your output types, your publication types, to the core uh, resource types vocabulary? <laughs> yeah, good, good question. I'm not, I'm not sure that I can precisely answer on the, <laughs> on the subject in the sense that how hard it was. Obviously, it was a bit of work. Uh, we were lucky that there were some resemblance to begin with, with Verdade, the model and the, the schema in relation to, to the publication in the sense that we didn't have to like make it too complex in the sense, but obviously it took time. And, and like I mentioned in the presentation, um, depending on your ambition, you can spend more time in that in the sense that if you want to actually have like the broad scope of, of things you have, for example, regarding classifications that you might use on a national or regional or organizational level, those are usually the hardest ones that how do you actually express that kind of information. But regarding the publications themselves, I, I feel that we, we um, it was doable, so, yeah. so nothing too much. To do that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Happy to hear that. <laughs> Can I have a or make a question as well? Please allow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Please, regarding so... on, uh, yeah, regarding Andrea, what you mentioned about the open air uh, future development in regards, especially to um, well the protocols in how those data exchange are to be done. You mentioned about the OIEPMH being not replaced, but kind of updated to something else alongside that. So is there some further information at this point on that, or is it something that is still in, in the planning progress? Um, thanks for the question. So um, this question uh, is, I think, justly dedicated to uh, Jan Rovak, um, and I will pass the floor to him. But uh, I think um, I don't really know the details currently if uh, both um, endpoints will be available, some endpoints via the API, uh, this is specialized format here and the UAE PMH. I think this is depends on the implementation of the uh, research information platforms, mm -hmm. if both um, endpoints are available or not in the meantime. But uh, we see um, a new endpoint, uh, the development of a new endpoint has um, it takes a long time for the in the in the deployment in the area of uh, research information systems or repositories. So um, I don't know what is here the strategy, but uh, Jan, please feel free to add. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say that uh, OAI PMH uh, has been working great for the purpose of harvesting meta-information, metadata. 
So as long as it works, uh, we will try to keep it. But if there are other important uh, use cases for perhaps more precisely querying into the body of a information in a CRIS, that would uh, probably go outside of the use case area of or the domain of OERPMH, and we would need an alternate API. But the basic task of you know passing the metadata contents from one system to another, uh, that's what is quite well covered by the existing protocol. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think, um, yes, this uh, is future work to do. As simple as, as is necessary, not, <laughs> not yeah. more difficult than what is necessary. <laughs> So, do we have further questions in the chat? Yes, so, uh, um, we have one from Marika. I understood that uh, there will be an API solution for harvesting to open air as well. When could we expect uh, to have it available? Probably the same question, and I think that's a really uh, uh, that's really going to happen in the uh, next years. Not uh, it needs the standardization, and then it needs also support from the open air side. So it will probably not be uh, too fast, but uh, it's uh, something that. Uh, may come in the future development of the guidelines. Um, or perhaps are you thinking about um, an API to uh, harvest information from open air? Because there is one such API. So yes, of course. So. Um... OpenAir has also APIs to request information uh, from the OpenAir research graph. Um, and this will, uh, the, a new documentation on the, to access the, um, well, how is the OpenAir research graph built and how could you access the OpenAir research graph? Uh, you could find this under, uh, graph.openair.eu. There's um, a documentation um, on the current uh, on the on the whole chain of uh, the open air research graph um, from aggregation over the harvesting of information from the graph itself after the deduplication. Um, Yes. Furthermore, don't see. No, no. We don't have uh, raise your hand. additional questions. Last chance. So for today. Okay. In the meantime, um, we have some people. I have a last. Um, last question to you. Um, as you've seen before, we have different entities in the, the reef model and the open air research graph covers uh, mostly the um, entities of products uh, as well as publications and patents. And um, the question is here, what is uh, the other, what is an entity that you would like to have uh, as an next in harvest by open air from Chris system uh, from your site that could be enrich the information uh, in the open air research graph 
as well to um, make uh, the rela uh, relations between the different parts of entities uh, from the publication or research products um, to the uh, organizations and as well as to the fundings and projects and of course uh, to equipments instruments which is also I think a uh, very interesting part um, and and then last to uh, events like conference that are um, also very important for uh, researchers here. So please let us know which is the one that you would like to see. And uh, I will end the question in three, two, one, last chance seconds now. Okay. I will share this also with you. Um, most of you are voting for projects um, as well as funding and events. Uh, great to see this. And also organization uh, units and equipment is important to you. Thank you very much for sharing this um, information from your side. So if there are no further questions, um, I would uh, give, the, um, I would like to uh, raise up some upcoming events from Eurochris. Uh, one is the membership meeting in on May, end of May in Brussels. Um, as well, there is um, the national and regional research portal working group from Eurochris. The next meeting is um, in end of April, I think. And um, we don't cover in this meeting today, but it's uh, we have more than our um, the registration process in provide itself the open air component to registering um, endpoints or data sources and CRIS systems as well and there's a uh, provide community call that I would like to invite you also the next one is on 3rd of May the first Wednesday of a month mostly and uh, on the page of the provide community calls, you will also see the previous uh, community calls uh, with the presentations and the uh, recordings and um, hope for uh, see you there. And I thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you also to the presenters today, to uh, Jonas. Nikonen and Tom Woods, and as well as uh, Pablo for the support from the Eurocris side. And thank you and take care, have a good day and see you. Thank you. <laughs>